YouTube of Visual Gaming Network and welcome to episode 30 of our Mario game and Java tutorial. Last episode, we implemented 1UP Mushrooms into our game. This episode, we're going to be improving our rendering performance. Now, uh, this episode is going to be a little shorter than usual and I can explain that. Uh, so, I was playing around uh, with the code. I was going to implement something that I won't spoil until next episode. And, uh, all of a sudden, uh, my computer crashed, and when I went back on, my Mario like project file was corrupted. I actually have no idea why, and everything in it was corrupted as well. So that means like all of our code, our sprite sheet, our levels, and uh, yeah, I really don't know what's going on. And uh, very fortunately, I had a backup thank god but it took me back to like episode 16 maybe even 17 of this series so i had to type uh, nearly everything we've implemented uh, after that i still got to implement a few things uh it's the power up block pipes and our launcher and our one up mushroom because i didn't have enough time to uh implement those things and i barely have enough time to record and edit this myself because I said I'm barely having enough time to record this right now. I have to make this a really quick episode. And uh, I promise you guys that we're going to be covering something more big. And, uh, and I promise you guys that the next episode will be longer than this episode. So yeah, how we're going to optimize our rendering performance is that... Let me just run our game. Should open our game class. We'll run it. All right, yeah, as you can see, I implemented the lives. But, so yeah, we're up here and everything, but the thing is, there's a lot of things that are being rendered. Whoa, can't move my player. Don't know why that's happening, but anyway, what's happening is there's things that isn't visible at the moment, and it's being rendered, although it's not visible on the screen. And uh, when we're rendering a lot more things into our game, uh, this can uh, become quite slow. And uh, yeah, in this episode, we're going to be implementing a function that doesn't render or update anything. Well, you'll update entities, but it doesn't render anything or update tiles when uh, it's not in the screen because we don't need to. And we're going to be using our rectangles to do this. So. We're going to create a rectangle method right now. Under our public int get frame height, we're going to create a rectangle. Just wait a sec, adjusting my microphone. Anyway, we're going to create a public rectangle and it's going to be called get visible area. This is going to return a ranked rectangle that will be surrounding the area we can see. And of course, we want our rectangle to follow the player because the camera follows the player and the camera pretty much shows the visible area. So, uh, just to get our player, we gotta do our usual for loop. It's less than handler dot entity dot size, and uh, yeah, create an entity object dot get i. And uh, because I mentioned uh, we're gonna be using our player for this, we gotta check if our entity's id is equal to id dot player. It's equal to id dot player. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we get an error because we haven't returned a rectangle. So in here, I'm actually just going to make this one line. Uh, in here, we're going to type return a new rectangle. And our x and y coordinate, you want to be a bit further back than the top left of our screen. So to do that, we're going to uh, set the x coordinate to uh, our player's x, so e dot get x minus, then put this in brackets game dot get frame actually we don't need to type game dot get frame width we're already in the game class so get frame width uh, divided by 2 minus 5 because as I said we want our rectangle to start a bit outside of our screen 
So if we type get frame width divided by two on its own, it'll be on the very edge of our screen. And uh, yeah, if we type minus five, then it'll go a bit further back. And uh, the reason why we want it a bit further back is because let's say our player moves right, our rectangle will be shifted to the right a bit and uh, we could actually see our rectangle, which means we can notice tiles and entities are uh, clipping in and out of the screen and we don't want that. So yeah, that's why. So we'll do the same thing, e dot get y, a minus, a minus get frame height divided by two minus five. And the width and height would logically be get frame width and get frame height. But if we just do get frame width and get frame height, uh, our rectangle will end inside of our screen and we don't want that. And let's say if we do get frame width plus five, it'll be on the very edge of our screen and we want it to go five more pixels forward. So we'll type get frame width plus 10 and the height of our rectangle will of course be get frame height plus 10. Okay, so now we created our rectangle. And as you can see, we actually get an error and you might be wondering why, like what the hell? We returned a rectangle, why is there an error? And if we hover over it, it said we have to return a rectangle, although we did. And so this, if you don't know why this is happening, this could confuse you a lot. And uh, let me tell you, this confused me until I figured out the solution. So in the integer methods, you can see that we always return an integer. But in the rectangle method, we don't always return an integer because there's a chance that our entity won't be a player. And if it's not a player, then this won't get called. So there's a chance that this won't get called. And uh, of course, a rectangle method always needs to return a rectangle. But if it's not a player, then it won't return a rectangle. So we get an error. And uh, to fix that, under our for loop, we're just going to simply type return return null and uh, as you know null means nothing so it's pretty much returning nothing so now we're going to make this work we'll go into our handler class and uh, before e dot render g we're going to make an if statement before that whoa if if and uh, in here we're going to type if game dot get visible area does not equal to null and e dot get bounds dot intersects not intersection dot intersects game dot get visible area and if that's true then our entity's render method will be called uh, just need to fix some spelling mistakes. Add uh, we need to put two and signs instead of one. And as you can see, we get an error. And the reason for that is because we are accessing these methods in a static way. And if we go into our game class, then our public rectangle get visible area method isn't static. So to fix that, we just make this a static method. So public static rectangle get visible area. But then we get an error on get frame width and get frame height is because if our method is a static method, then we can't access non-static methods inside of a static method. So to fix that, we make get frame width and get frame height static as well. So yeah, now we're gonna go into our handler class and uh, we're gonna copy this line of code paste it next to our tile dot render g line and uh, we need to change e to t because uh, we're in the tile for loop for this if statement and uh, we're going to do the same thing but only for t dot tick because we want like goombas and koopas things like that to update even when it's not visible and uh, there'll be other things that we want to update when it's not visible but tiles, we don't really need to update when it's not visible. So yeah, we'll put this line here and we need to change E to T because we're working in a tile for loop and we're not, and we don't have an entity. We have a tile instead. So this should all work. Let's run our game. All right, shows our lives. 
and if everything has gone to plan, uh, this should work. There actually could probably be no distance at all at the moment, but that's because we don't have much things in our game at the moment. When we have a lot more things in our game, this will be very useful. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe if someone you know is interested in learning how to program in game in Java. Please send them this tutorial. I would highly appreciate it. If you have a Twitter account, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. And also, don't forget to suggest what topic you want me to cover in the next tutorial. So, see you guys soon. Bye.